These new Ryzen CPUs that just got released have been making headlines for outperforming Intel CPUs in a wide variety of benchmarks. In fact, the 3900X took the number one spot from Intel on Passmark's single CPU benchmark leaderboard as of the making of this video. The new GPUs haven't gotten quite as much attention, but I have heard they do extremely well at encoding and decoding, so today I will put that to the test. This is the brand new RX5700. It has 8GB of GDDR6 memory and comes in at about $350 as of the making of this video. We have tested AMD GPUs in the past and even taken some flack for my opinions when it comes to using AMD GPUs for Plex hardware transcoding. Well today I'm going to revisit this and see if the new RX5700 has any major improvements when it comes to hardware transcoding in Plex. In our previous AMD video, I had people comment that we weren't really testing the RX 580 or Vega 64. The argument was that we were using the compute cores for transcoding, and that's why they didn't perform well. This is not at all the case. As you can see, the hardware transcoding was actually done using encode and decode ASICs on the RX 5700 today, which was also true in our previous video. Sure, you can argue that AMD's decode and encode engines might not be optimized in Plex or whatever version of FFmpeg Plex is using, and that is what holds these GPUs back. That still doesn't take away from the fact that these tests are indeed run on the encode and decode ASICs built into these AMD GPUs, therefore this is a fair comparison to QuickSync or NVIDIA's lineup. Our test bench today is a dual 2687W CPU, 60GB of DDR3 desktop running Windows 10 Pro. It has this RX 5700 and all tests were repeated three times and averaged out. The combined CPU score of our test bench is almost 21,000 in Passmark and will not be a bottleneck no matter how fast this RX 5700 might be. It should also be noted that the i5-8600K test bench scores were obtained leveraging QuickSync with hardware transcoding turned on. Our first test was done transcoding a 1080p 3.5 megabit per second H.265 AC3 file down to H.264 at 1080p. The results of this test were interesting, as the performance of the RX 5700 definitely has improved over the Vega 64, but it still only tied the i5-8600K with QuickSync at about 15 transcodes. The next test was done transcoding a 1080p 2.2 megabit per second H.265 file with AAC audio down to H.264 at 1080p. The results of this test were very similar to the previous test, with the RX 5700 coming in at a tie with the 8600K's QuickSync capable iGPU. In our third test, we transcoded a 1080p H.264 12 megabit per second AC3 audio file down to 10 megabits per second with AAC audio. We only saw about 12 transcodes on the RX 5700, and even that was a bit of a stretch. I'm not sure why, but the clients kept locking up, and in order to complete this test, I had to wait on each client to fully buffer before starting the next test. This was very disappointing, as I would imagine if you actually ran this card in your server, your clients would probably experience the same problem. If multiple people start transcode jobs simultaneously, Plex will freeze up, and that's a very terrible experience. The final test was an attempt to transcode 4K HEVC to 1080p. This did not succeed, and I couldn't get a single transcode to start without experiencing buffering. This was also disappointing. Here are all of the tests we ran. As you can see, compared to an i5-8600K with QuickSync, the RX 5700 doesn't make a lot of sense if you're buying it solely for Plex. At $350, you could build a newer gen Intel CPU with QuickSync and get even better performance than I saw with my 8600K. And when comparing it to a P2000, things get even worse. The P2000 being similar in price completely decimates the RX 5700. I think the reason for this is almost certainly due to optimization for Intel's QuickSync and Nvidia's encode and decode engines in Plex, specifically the version of FFmpeg Plex is using. If you're looking to upgrade your server or you want to build an entirely new server, I think it makes sense at this time to go with it either a newer generation QuickSync enabled CPU or an NVIDIA GPU. As of the making of this video, AMD GPUs still don't stack up at all price to performance wise in Plex. 
I'm sure there are some AMD fanboys out there that will flame me in the comments, but if you're buying the GPU for Plex specifically, it doesn't make any sense to spend $350 and get the same performance of a mid-range quick sync capable Intel CPU. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and thank you all for the support. You guys have really made it a pleasure for me to keep making content like this for all of you with all of your positive feedback and comments.